finally getting around to hopefully replacing the weather stripping on the door. Uh, here's uh, the new weather stripping piece and it's going to go on the door here if all goes well. Uh, right along here. Now the outer panel has to come off so that uh, there's a screw buried in there and you have to take this trim panel off and then I'll be able to take that off pretty easily I think. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is number one I bought the wrong piece. What I really needed was this stuff uh, so I'll have to pull the roof off later and replace that but this may help because right now if you listen to this when it closes it doesn't sound very good so I'm doing this video partly so that I can remember what it sounded like so here's that sound again and maybe a little harder All right, so hopefully that will improve the um, factory service manual tells you how to do this there's some good videos on YouTube as well uh, here's the factory service manual material that I printed out and I'm going to start by pulling out the courtesy light and then this trim panel after popping this guy off and it tells you where the screws are as does the videos online. I also need to pop the hood because you don't want to be working on this without taking the battery off in case you short something out you don't want to blow your wiring in your car. So I'll do that next. So following the factory service manual instructions, I have a couple things to, that I need to do. First thing we need to do is put the window down all the way, it says, and then uh, pop the hood and disconnect the negative battery terminal. That way we won't destroy any wiring in the car if we happen to screw up while we're pulling connectors and pushing wires around and so forth. So, got the window down now, and next thing to do is to disconnect the negative battery terminal. And so, of course, I had the wrong wrench, so I gotta go get the right wrench and then disconnect that, put it safely out of the way, and then we'll start working on the door. So, step one after disconnecting the battery, and of course, before that, getting the window down, um, is to get into this bezel panel for the doorknob courtesy light. This light, um, was held by a clip at the top on the right and tip a clip at the top on the left, just inboard. Um, and so I just used a screwdriver and it didn't cause any harm. It was very easy to pop out here and here. So that was easy. Uh, now what we need to do is get to two screws. There's one over here, I don't know if you can see it. And then there's another one which is underneath the door lock mechanism. And you have to pop this piece off right here and I just did that by gently prying out uh, right over here. So and then after that we'll pull this panel off and disconnect the light and the switch and uh, stow those connections and then we'll move on. So first of the oops moments um, got that screw out there and took the screw out down here and it wouldn't come out so I poked around a little bit more. It looks like there's one back here so I'm going to try to get that guy. Okay, I got the third screw out, and uh, you can see I've got it sort of sort of coming out, but of course it uh, doesn't want to come when I don't want to pull on it too hard. You're supposed to pull the handle out and then pull this, but I'm going to work on it a little bit and reread the manual. Okay, it took a little work and a little uh, guts to pull on the thing. I had to pull it from this side and pull it out, and then the trailing piece over here came out. It looks like it could have maybe come out on either side, but it's loose now and I'll take the connectors off and then go to the next step in this job. And continuing, nothing's easy. I uh, had to get this light out of this uh, lamp section here and did that uh, by pulling this retainer off and then had to rotate the lamp to get it to come out. Now the tricky part is, well, number one, it was easy to, to get him through out this hole. He was he was in that hole. Had to get him out of there, but now I've got to get this larger piece through. It looks like there's enough room, so I'm just going to push him this way. Okay, not too bad. I got the uh, this lamp piece out. And 
Now I'm working on this switch down here, the power door switch, I guess is what that is. And it looks like I just pry on either side back and forth a few times. Of course, the power is disconnected, so that's safe. And it should pop right off. Also, this is now completely free. I should have done that earlier. Okay, trend panel is off. Next stop is to get this armrest off. And fortunately, I do have the factory service manual. Uh, there's the trim piece and the little door lock knob, but uh, the factory service manual. Just finished these steps and working on this next. Remove or disconnect. Trim panel is described. Did that. Invert panel on clean surface and remove the screws. Oh yeah, okay, great. Um, armrest bracket, right side only, I'm doing the left. Armrest from trim panel. Now, they don't say anything about it, but there is a picture. Here, if I can get to it. So here's the picture of what we're supposed to do next. So I've got the trim panel off, and you can see the light mechanism and the uh, power door switch. Um, is that what that is? Connection connector right here. Next thing is to remove the uh, this filler right here, power armrest filler. Apparently there's a screw here, and let's see what else it says in the instructions. Let's see, armrest from trim panel, armrest filler, screws from armrest filler cup. Here's, oops, pictures here. So there's the picture. So screws from armrest filler cup, armrest filler by raising rear edge and pulling toward rear to clear armrest filler clip on forward edge. Wiring harness connectors for the side window switch and outside rear view mirror switch. So that would be these guys. So once I get these screws, there must be two screws in there. And then I'm supposed to, what did they say, pull it rear? I don't know, I'll read it again. And then I'll be able to get to these mechanisms in here. Okay, I got it free. I did pull up and back on the rear here. And then I had to carefully move around a little bit. The key was to get this clip up here free of this edge. And it is, so now theoretically I can rotate this or turn it or something and get to the switches so I can disconnect those. Okay, uh, one trick appears to be to get the lower one off first. So I've got this connector disconnected from this socket here. That was just a straight pull. There didn't seem to be any retainer clip. This one has a retainer clip here. Looks like it's free, so maybe the wires are, or the connectors are just stuck. And I'll gently but uh, strongly pull on it a little bit more. See if I can get that guy off. Yep, that was right. It just needed to be pulled on without pulling on the wires, of course. And you can see the connector there. It looks good. It's keyed so I can get it back on without screwing up, I think. So I think uh, this piece is free, so we'll move on. So here's what the door filler looks like off the vehicle. This one's got um, <coughs> a rubber coating, I guess they probably all do, except it's all worn off here, and it's worn off along this edge here. There's the rubber, and here's the plastic underneath. <clears throat> not sure what to do about that. guess it's not too hard to take this off. Don't have to go through all the other when I take it off next time. So I'll figure it out. Maybe maybe I can buy another piece and replace this. Very easy to take these uh, switch systems out. A couple of screws on each. And then some screws on the uh, leading edge clip mechanism here. And the rest of it's all big plastic piece. All right, <clears throat> got the uh, door filler, no, armrest filler, that's what they call it, mechanism off. There it is, lying down there. Oh, next to the uh, trim panel for the lock mechanism. And back to the factory service manual. See what it says we do next. The next thing is the trim panel. Lower window completely. Oh, already did that. Um, remove the accessory bezel as described in this section, did that. Remove the armrest filler, did that. Remove the window switch, that's for the right hand side, <coughs> excuse me, only. 
The window switch is described in this section, right side only, so we won't do that. Trim panel bolt slash screws. So we'll look at that on the next page. And then rear compartment lid release switch wiring harness connector. By pulling the lower edge of the trim panel outward and reaching between the trim panel and the door. That sounds like fun. And then finally trim panel from door by pulling the trim panel out at the bottom and then up out of the door alignment slots. So that means that we're going to be taking these screws off here. There's one up here. There's one on the back edge as well as this switch on the back edge. hope that comes out in the video. And then we'll pull out at the bottom and then this piece here there must be alignment stuff and it will just come up and out theoretically. We shall see. Oh yes and here is the pictures. So we're working on this one here. One, two, three, four, five screws on the bottom, one forward, one aft on the on the uh, side, and then the switch. So that's what we're going to do. All right, got all the screws they mentioned off, and tried to pull the door panel out. I haven't disconnected the switch, but it looks like there's enough room in there. I'll do that later. Here's the interesting thing. I grabbed hold of the bottom of the door. And I was able to get the front to come up. You can see the front is moving, but this rear wouldn't come off. And it turns out, I don't know if this is somebody somebody added, something somebody added, or if it was there from the factory, but there's a, a bolt down in there, a screw, that I need to take off. So I'll do that next. Then hopefully it'll come free. And there it is, the showstopper. All this work, and now there's some bolt in here that I don't seem to be able to get out. It looks like maybe it's rounded. I'm going to have to look at it closer up. This is that uh, aft bolt on the top of the door panel. And that's the last thing holding it, but it's going to take forever probably. Okay, there it is. Finally got it out. Discovered that it's a 5 16 Couldn't get this uh, socket on it before because it was pressed up against the metal and there was no room. But got some needle nose pliers and haven't smushed my fingers yet, so that's good. And eventually it backed it out far enough that I could pull it out with this. I think this is actually the bolt that holds the weather stripping on. So this guy had to come out anyway, but I don't think it was in the factory service manual this way. So we'll see what we get when we look inside. Panel should come off now, hopefully. Yay, the panel is free. There it is. It was easy to take this off. Just pull the clip out of the way and wiggle it a little bit. That was easy. The acoustic material here has separated. There's some glue. So I'll try to glue that back. Maybe it'll make it a little bit quieter. Although mostly I have wind noise. And perhaps the weather strip, which I can now actually get to, uh, that was not the bolt that holds the weather strip. Here's the bolt that holds the weather strip. That was some other bolt over here with, I have no idea what the purpose that was. It was clearly an aftermarket. Somebody drilled it out and tapped it in for some unknown reason. Probably a customer was complaining about the door panel not fitting well, so they just stuck that sucker in there. Pain in the butt. So... Hopefully that's our one glitch for this job. Got the door panel off. And there it sits. And so now let's go take a look and see what we do next. So the next task is to pull this bolt here and this one up here. And then the weather strip can be peeled off here, around, and cleaned up. And we'll put the new one on with a little bit of glue to help seal it and keep it quiet. And hopefully things will go smooth from here on. Okay, okay, took the bolt out of here. 
and uh, then this came loose and then I started with needle nose pliers pulling these out one by one but then I realized that I could just tug on them and so that's what I'm doing now and I'll pull them out later the strip is not glued on so this is really easy nice that at least one thing is easy uh, at this end I did have to take uh, two screws out there and there but they were easy to find so I'll take these out and then I'm going to use these needle nose pliers to take those out and uh, and we should be ready to put the new one on after a little cleaning here's the old and the new weather strip side by side the obviously the new one is on the top still has the clips in it interesting thing of course is that the um, old one appears longer than the new one but hopefully that'll be fine new one will stretch and be much better seal we hope I will check to make sure that the places to attach are in the right locations they probably are here's the other end looks fine looks the same so hopefully they put the clips in the right place as well a little closer inspection comparison between the old and the new the uh, pitch of the clips looks reasonable it's wider in the um, hmm. hopefully that's because it's been stretched it's wider in the old one but it has been stretched so that's probably okay uh, here's the old one doesn't look horrible here's the new one looks much better the old one looks bad here so and then on this side it's definitely got some some wrinkling going on and probably was not sealing well the new one in that location of course is perfectly clean so hopefully that will give a better seal it will make a better sounding door and probably keep some noise out didn't really have any weather but no weather problems but this should help so here's an interesting thing I'm looking at the door where the weather strip clips will go and the weather strip will rest on the surface and I did clean it but I'm running my finger across it there's absolutely no adhesive on this I had bought this very nice weather strip adhesive and um, I don't think I'm going to use it because the factory didn't use it and I've put on weather strips before without it I mean they are rubber and they're supposed to contact surfaces that don't have adhesive on them and the clips will do a very good job holding them in so I think what I will do is use the adhesive to attach this sound shield or weather shield or whatever it is inside back and leave it at that possibly changing my mind a little bit um, I did put some adhesive underneath this piece from here down to about here down to the first clip there seemed to be some on there from before so I did that I also lightly cleaned up this section I don't want to scrape it up too bad but lightly clean that up and we'll put some adhesive from here um, on down to here or wherever it was before the other thing which is interesting of course nothing is easy these clips are not really going in very easily so I need stronger fingers or something not really sure what to do but I can put it in and push those in later did get the sound shield nicely uh, glued back in place so it's all sealed so that's very good okay got it all the way on and once the piece was all the way on I found that a good way to get the clips in I got all the bottoms all the way in but what I was doing is you can find them by pulling down a little bit and then you kind of pull slightly back while pushing up and you can feel a resounding sort of sink in when it happens so you just need to wear your fingers out and I'm going to work all the way around and get all the others in and I think we'll be fine so putting it on first before trying to get them all was probably a good move okay the door is back on the door panel is back on all the pieces are put back together we did have to put this guy back in apparently that was something that had been added before because this piece wouldn't really clip in well and I could not get it to clip in well either so 
I took their lead, but I changed the head of the screw so that next time it will be easier to get out. Everything else seems to have gone back together as well as it was. We've got a little bit of an issue here, but I think that was there before. And I'm still trying to figure out why this lock is not going smoothly, which is not going to be good for the power lock, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Other than that, I think we're okay, so I might go ahead and connect the battery. Just have to watch that power lock. The sun is down. So, it was a long job, but there it is. Done. One more thing. Let's see how the door closes. I've exercised it a little bit. Uh, it's predicted it bind, not binds. It's tighter than it was before. And so I'll do that and we'll also listen to it. So here we go. Closing, closing. Right there. You can hear the rubber start to contact. That's okay. It's new. It's a new gasket. Put some lubricant on it. So here we go. I'll just close it and see it, what it sounds like. I like that. That sounds more like a new car. Try that one more time. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a success.